Hello, it is Saturday, December 30th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday crossword, which means we're going to be solving a difficult, themeless puzzle, maybe quite possibly the trickiest puzzle of the week. And I'm very curious about it because I just popped into the Daily Solve Discord chat server to look at um, a couple reactions. And Any Prophet says, Saturday's grid is wild. And Sumato says, wow, tough but rewarding Saturday. That was a fun experience. So I'm very curious to know what this means, especially from a themeless... You know what? I just keep calling it a themeless puzzle, but now I see there are circles in the grid. Is this a rare themed Saturday, perhaps? Okay, I'm very... I, I didn't uh, I didn't plan to make that observation just now, but I did just happen to see those. Okay, well, that's very interesting. I'm very curious. Let's get on with it. So uh, this, I don't know, somewhat uh, confusing and mysterious edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Dre, Overfull Hitbox, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they directly support this series, bring us this channel. For that, I'm exceedingly grateful. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who backs the channel. Um, it really does mean a lot to me. And if you'd like to do so, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve, where you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons as well as for benefactors, the Let's Check the Crosses official mug. So do consider it. Uh, and there's a link in the description field. Uh, there's also a link in the description field to that very same Discord chat server that I mentioned mere seconds ago. And uh, that's a nice friendly chat community. You can check it out. And finally, if you do enjoy these videos, please do subscribe to the channel on YouTube, like the videos, and comment if you feel so moved. Uh, those things are all helpful as well. All right, let's get on to it. This is a Saturday possibly themeless possibly themed construction by Simeon Siegel, who's constructed, I think this is his 10th crossword, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's see what those folks on the Discord server were talking about, and let's start solving. Dad on Blackish. Oh, I've seen some of this. I think the dad's name is Dre for Andre. Um, what about this? Part of a turntablist's headgear, for short. Uh... Part of a turntable figure. I mean, they'd be headphones, presumably. What else would they be? I don't know. Street in Strasbourg. So we're simply looking for the French name for a street, which in this case is Rue Rue. And here we have a participant in an ultra marathon, an extreme athlete, maybe? No, extreme. Not sure. Not sure. Bucket of bolts. Um, toolbox or a bucket of bolts could be used to refer to a, you know, really run down car. Maybe. Not sure. Source of intelligence. Brain? I mean, I don't know. There could be quite a few different ways to interpret this and quite a few possible answers to each of them, probably. They work in meters. Poems? Poetic meter? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Let's check the crosses. Twists can thicken it. Ah, yes. The plot has thickened, you could say, after a twist has, has been uh, re uh, released, has been encountered. Like art conveying emotion rather than realism. Like art conveying emotion rather than realism. Well, let's start with emotional because that's in the clue. Expressionist? No. Uh, expressionistic? Is that... Would you possibly say that? Let's just see if I can rule it out. And, oh, maybe it is the case. And if nearly half of all website addresses, comps of .com would be the end of nearly half. That makes sense. It is by far the most common domain name. Uh, Top-level domain, little ender. Violet, violinist Zimbalist. Oh. Uh, I do know this name, and I can't think... Ephraim or something. Hiram, I can't, I can't remember what it is. Uh, what about this? All blank, court order. All rise. The, uh, I don't know, bailiff, I guess, could say, maybe. Um, maybe it is Ephraim. Seinfeld role. Elaine. I think with an I there, I think that's the only 
at least of the major characters. I think that's the only possibility. Elaine Bennis was the character. Uh, musician Brian, Brian Eno, is our official male solo artist of the, the New York Times crossword. Uh, Brian Eno and Yoko Ono are two, are two officials. I wonder if they've ever worked together. Anyway, Wall Street, e.g. Financial Center? Does that fit? It does. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Okay. I want to say this is Ephraim. It's disconcerting that I can't check that cross. It's an unchecked cell. Hmm. I might just leave it for now because these circles might reveal something eventually. The fairy queen woman whose name means peace. Irina. There we go. That means peace. And then they hang around. I, I hope I'm spelling this correctly. Uh, they hang around the house. I'm not sure. Eaves? No. Well, something like that maybe? Gutters? No. Not sure. Soccer legend who played for both sides in his final match in 1977. Oh, Pele. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know this fact, but I at least have, <laughs> I'm at least familiar with the soccer legend Pele, one of the most famous footballers of all time. Cabinet uh, resignee of 1988. Ed Meese, maybe? From Reagan's cabinet? Let's see if, I'm not sure. Right, let's see if that works here. Do you, yeah, maybe it is. Do you know who I am? You, you might ask sort of pretentiously. So... Does that work? Very good hand to be dealt in poker. Something aces, four aces, that would be a very good hand to be dealt, certainly. Sort of very unlikely, astonishingly good hand. Across a wide expanse of rural land. Not sure. Blank Drogo, Jason Momoa's character on Game of Thrones. Right, we had a Game of Thrones clue the other day. I've never actually seen Game of Thrones, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What about this? Completely blank. Oh, no, black, sorry, as the sky, an inky, maybe an inky black sky, you could say, poetically. And my guess here was going to be Ivan, just because it sounded like a name <laughs> that might go, but if it's inky, it isn't. Uh, relative of a slot canyon. A gulch, maybe? Slot canyon. I think a slot canyon is, you know, a very thin uh you know, almost sort of a slash cut through the earth. And I don't know enough about what defines these various forms, but, a, you know, gulch is also kind of precipitous. Maybe con Drogo, maybe? What may come before further notice? An email? Anesthetized, so to speak. Oh, under. So if you're under, you're, you know, you're under full anest anesthesia. You're you put under your unconscious before a medical procedure, for instance. Okay, Goethe's the... Oh, what is this? I've probably seen it before, but I, I can't... I'm not sure. I'm not familiar enough with the work itself. Uh, they hang around the house. Oh, drapes, drapes. Oh, the Earl King. Okay, so here we have a um, presumably an archaic spelling of Earl, E-A-R-L. What about this one? Across a wide expanse of rural land. Oh, over hill and dale. Oh, it isn't con. Okay, good. I'm glad I didn't write that in. That was what I would have thought with K-A-H. So Cal or Cal Drago, I guess. And then uh, over hill. Oh, I oh, know I misspelled this. Over hill and dale. There we go. I don't remember what over hill and dale actually derives from, but it's certainly you know very commonly used sort of phrase to evoke pastoral distance and beauty. Um, but it must derive from some, you know, it must have been coined by someone. And I don't know who. Aromatic herb. Tarragon. There we go. I love the smell, the smell of tarragon. Uh, strips in a club. Question mark. Right. So presumably this doesn't mean <laughs> remove one's clothing in, you know, a, a club, a physical establishment, because there's a question mark, which means we should be reading it possibly more literally. But I... Bacon? Bacon strips? Oh, it is that. It is that. In a club sandwich, you could have strips of bacon. Okay, there we go. 
craft at camp a canoe, so a watercraft in this case. Tonight's another chance to start blank, lyric from It's Just Another New Year's Eve. Another chance to start again. I don't think I know the song, but that is kind of how, you know, culturally, that is sort of how we treat New Year's. It's a chance to start again. All right. Uncertain affirmation. I guess so. One time Yankees pitcher Hideki, who I don't know, uh, unsurprisingly, <laughs> foil alternatives apes. So I don't really know what distinguishes a foil from an ape. I'm sure some, someone may even have explained it to me in the comments to these videos before, but uh, I don't remember. I just know that they're both used in fencing. They're swords used in fencing. Okay. So ex if something's exhausting, it's using it. So if you're sort of exhausting your resources, you're using your resources in that sense. You're exhausting your funds, for instance. Okay. Gig components. Um, rigs. Sort of whole guitar amp kind of rig, maybe. Is that what we're looking for here? Not sure. Reference work that Tolkien contributed to from Waggle to Wild, right? The Oxford English Dictionary. The creation of the Oxford English Dictionary is a very fascinating story. It's worth looking up and reading about. It was compiled. It was almost sort of what we now call crowdsourced. Um, it was, you know, such a ma monumentally massive work. It was sort of divided up and given to many different contributors, some of whom were just kind of members of the public. It was really interesting. Anyway, gig components. Uh, maybe... It, well, I was thinking gig in the sense of playing a show, a music performance, but maybe it isn't that. Oh, no, it isn't. It isn't. It's gig is in gigabytes, computer storage, a unit of, of, of storage on a computer. So megabytes would be, a, a meg would be a component of a gig, a megabyte of a gigabyte. There we go. Okay. So fit, toned, maybe physically fit, toned, you have muscle tone. Rarer than rare, once in a lifetime. Yeah, that does fit. This is a nice grid. We've got lots of long grid spanning answers, but they're coming together very nicely. Speakers in many classrooms for short PAs, public address systems. So, um, you know, speakers that are ampl amplify someone through a microphone. Handles clumsily pause at maybe. You, you're kind of fumbling with something. You're dropping it. Maybe you're kind of pawing at it. Took a turn went something took a turn for the better it went for the better maybe i guess so some merchandising opportunities not sure what about this hour at which to sing all lang syne so this is of course of, of course sung uh, on new year's eve eve as the clock strikes midnight or 12 which is xii in roman numerals all right some merchandising opportunities what is this mix-ins you sort of i don't know i don't like that dear man dear sir you might formally write in the address in a letter it might have a small bulb something this will end in e surely so what is this oh tie-ins maybe this oh no this isn't poems it's poets right i was thinking you know, it says they work in meters. And I was thinking, well, the way a poet, sorry, the way a poem works, you know, how does this poem work? You might say, it, well, here's the meter. But, and I think that's a valid way to read it. But I think probably a better way to read it is the way that it's intended to be, which is that poets do their work using poetic meter. That is how they work in the sense of working their you know, profession or their craft. All right. So some merchandising opportunities then are tie-ins, which is what, what suggested I change poem to, poems to poets there. So uh, different products could have marketing tie-ins with one another, I suppose. And then a brand with a, oops, that's wrong. Brand with a joystick is Atari. So the um, old video game console manufacturer, the old video game console brand. Um, still not sure about the Yankees pitcher. What about post-op program? A oh, rehab. So you could, you know, maybe you had some kind of skeletal injury and you need to rehabilitate yourself after surgery. Okay, uh, concealer, a veil, such as the gauzy privacy veil that uh, shrouds the mysteries of the crossword before we start solving each time. Nickname for Edward, Ted or Ned? 
those are, I believe those are both valid nicknames for Edward. What about, I don't know which. It might have a small bulb. Um, droppers? Oh, some kind of eyedropper? You know, they've got, would you call that a little bulb that you squeeze? I don't know. I don't know about this name either, unfortunately. Previously known as, nay, so from the French for born. So you, someone's maiden name, for instance, could be written after nay to indicate how they were, what, the name with which they were born. African who lives along the coast of the Red Sea. Um, African who lives along the coast of the Red Sea. I'm going to be annoyed with myself for not instantly getting that, but we'll come back to it. Source of intelligence. Letters of endorsement in brief. RSVP? No, I don't know why it would be that. Okay, let's see. Coast name for a former Irish province. Oh, interesting. Oh, coat. Did I say coast? I think I did. Coat. That's that's not the same. A former Irish province. That's interesting. It must be Ulster then, which is, you know, often how you might refer to Northern Ireland, the kind of the Ulster counties sort of that, uh, you know, the, of the, the counties of Ireland, then Ulster was uh, largely the one that, that made up Northern Ireland. Um, so it must, it must be an Ulster coat. Um, Northern Ireland, of course, being part of the UK rather than the Republic of Ireland. Um, African who, oh no, so we, so we looked at that. What have we not looked at? Attire for many bagpipe players. Oh, kilts may be associated with, with Scotland. Uh, okay, bucket of bolts. Okay, what have I not seen? Letter of completion in brief. I'm not sure. Uh, Count in the Blues Hall of Fame. Count Basie. There we go. There's something I can just write in. A uh, legendary jazz musician. And then boot could be to out somebody to boot to... Well, oh, there's so many things it could be. <laughs> could be a boot that you wear on your foot. Could be the boot of a car. Could be to boot, you know, to kick someone. It could be boot to eject somebody. I don't know. Terra. Oh, here we go. Terracotta. So here's the, it's the material. And then boot... I'm not sure. Shade by the pool. And eagle constellation. Uh, I'm not sure about that either. What may come before further notice? That is of a question mark. I didn't really fully appreciate that, but I'm not sure what it's doing. So goofs and proofs, errata. There we go. So uh, mistakes. Shade by the pool. No, no. Grand, uh, Grand Ole Opry. So this is a famous um, country music performing uh, performance venue. So there we go. And then fashionable dresser, a fop, someone who dresses in a you know self consciously kind of fancy way. Events suggested. Oh right, okay. So here's the theme. Events suggested by this puzzle circled squares, read clockwise from the top. Oh right. A party would be an event. Uh, do I think that's the answer? Eagle constellation. Oh, this is familiar, but I can't think what it is. Aquila? What is this? Participant in an ultramarathon. Runner? Some kind of runner at the end? I'm not sure. Directional suffix, earn as a northern, southern. Turner autobiography. Oh, I, Tina. I've seen that quoted before. Tina Turner's autobiography. And then pair of hand drums in Indian music. Tabla, that's an Indian instrument. There we go. Uh, oh, Eritrean. That's the, that's the African who lives along the coast of the Red Sea. There we go. Okay, great. So source of intelligence. I'm not sure still. Bucket of bolts. Oh, a junker. I think, okay, so it is, you know, a car or a boat, maybe that's just a, you know, falling apart. Oh, D a DJ Mike would be part of the turntablist headgear. There we go. DJ Mike. That's good. And then it might have a small bulb. Oh, medicine dropper. Okay. 
I was on the right track with that, I think. And then, oh, endurance runner. There we go. There we go. That's the ultra marathon, right? Oh, for some reason, when I read ultra marathon, I was thinking, I don't know why, but for some reason I read that, but I was thinking a sort of um, triathlon or something. I don't know what, that was strange. Okay. I should have should have just read the actual clue. I might have I might have said aloud ultra marathon, but in my brain I was definitely thinking, speci- and specifically I was thinking uh, triathlon. I don't know why, not biathlon or anything else. Anyway, letter of completion in brief. Uh, I don't know what that is. Longtime diplomat Abba. This this is scratching something in my brain, but I can't think what it is. Ebon? Boot. Oh, can? To can somebody, to fire them, to boot them. Okay. Oh, certificate. Certificate. Right, of course. A letter of completion in brief, so simply certificate abbreviated. All right. Shade by the pool. Aqua? Why would that be? Oh, because color? Shade? Aqua blue? Maybe, as opposed to aqua meaning literally water. Okay, okay, I think my thought about the constellation might have been right as well then. So what might come before further notice? Right, until further notice. So what word may come before the literally the words further notice would be the word until to create the phrase until further notice. There we go. So I think this is Aquila and this is party probably. Okay, well, let's finish this off then. Uh, letters of endorsement in brief. No idea what this is. A nickname for Edward is Ted or Ned. Source of intelligence is a depot, a letters of endorsement, Rex recommendations, a recon reconnaissance might be how you obtain, you know, military intelligence or something. So, all right, so what do these spell? What did, how did it say to read them? Read clockwise from the top. C-O-N blank E-T T. Confetti. It is a party. Oh, confetti. It's a New Year's Eve party, I guess, then probably. This is Ephraim. Okay, right. My, my thought was correct. And there we go. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Wow. Okay, so Oh, right. I see. It's filling in the, oh, it's filling in the black cells. Oh, that's great. That's a really nice grid. That's why, that's why we had this sort of very open, airy grid with, and I hadn't, I mean, I I think I sort of noticed this, I guess, but didn't really consciously process it, that the, all of the black cells are individual. They're all these little bits of confetti. Oh, that's really nice. And, um, and we spelled confetti out similarly in little sort of atomized bits and it's just a bit of a preview of uh, tomorrow night, of New Year's Eve. Very nice. I think that's a justifiable Saturday theme. It was a very simple theme. It didn't really intrude upon the solving experience. I think it's perfectly acceptable for a Saturday and uh, a nice excuse to uh, put some color into the grid. Well, there we go. That was great. Um, I thought that was a fun Saturday puzzle. Not, Not too challenging, I think, as far as Saturdays go, or maybe that was just the kind of luck of the draw for me in terms of happening to, uh, to work well with, with my body of knowledge. But, uh, there were some cases I had to, uh, wait until the, <laughs> wait until the end to fill in. Uh, anyway, let me know how you fared with this, this celebratory edition of the New York times, ostensibly themeless Saturday crossword. Uh, let me know in the discord or the comments on the video. I'm always curious. And I will be back tomorrow for the Sunday edition of the puzzle. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. (laughs) 